Hello and good evening. Here's the second part of our AdLib reproduction assembly. I have installed the IC sockets in the last part. Um, I also got a new holder here for the PCB board to make soldering more easy. I don't know if it works out, um, but I will try anyway. And now next up are putting all the resistors here on board. The IC sockets were pretty easy. You have to make sure that you solder one pin first and then on the opposite side the other pin as well. Then you have that thing pretty stuck in there and then you can start soldering the rest of the pins. Okay, I already see that this is a bit twingy, but it kind of works. Well, yeah, I have to see how good this works. I think, ah yes, I have to loosen one of the screws here maybe. I'm not sure if I will keep this, but I at least can try out. Um, so for stuff where you have to sort of do a lot of soldering and not so many components individually, it should be fine. Not sure if this is the right thing for now, but yeah, let's see. So I also printed out the uh, document for this reproduction card and especially here we have I'm not sure if you can see this. Let's refocus. Yeah, here's the list of the different uh, resistors and capacitors. Now we'll use this to actually put all the correct values in. You should also have your multimeter handy in case, um, for example, you have to identify the resistor resistors very quickly. You can use the multimeter in the yeah ohm setting, of course. Uh, here's mine. A cheap reliable tech life multimeter. I will use this in between to check on the values of the resistors. And Mauser, the provider of my or where I bought my, my components, is actually so nice as to pack every capacitors into their own pockets and it even says on the package here. This is 16 volts, 4.7 microfarads. It's a tantalum capacitor. It's obviously German here, but yeah, you get the gist. And you have to note that tantalum capacitors are polarized, so you have to make sure that, for example, here at C10 you put the plus side on the plus pin, etc. The usual standard capacitors, I think, I have some here as well, yeah, for example this here. This is a ceramic multi-layer capacitor MLCC with 47,000 picofarads. Well, that's, I think you could use a different um, unit here. Well, this is non-polarized, so you can put it in either way. Okay, those are that, and there's also a few special packages here with transistors, I think, at least. Yeah, that's an NPN transistor. transistor. Um, in an anti-static bag, because of course ICs and transistors are a bit sensitive, and also a nice little package here with diodes, which we will be able to use. Yeah, um, also I see that my phone is casting a shadow here, so I will adjust the lighting a bit yeah, this should be better. I hope you can see. Well, let's re-center this as well. Fire up the soldering iron and then we can get started. Let's check the temperature. Looks good. Wait a few seconds until it heats up. And then we can get onto the fun part. Okay, the first part of the soldering is done, and I see that I screwed up this resistor here. I will resolder that. It's sticking out. Um, other than that, this worked pretty fine. The problem with this 
holder is that, obviously the components can fall through, as did this, if you don't bend the legs correctly on the other side. Yeah, but other than that, I'm pretty, pretty okay with this thing. Also, you have to turn it this way, the other way the springs will get in the way, but if you remember that, I think it's a, quite a good solution to keep your hands free and you can hold the solder and the soldering iron pretty well. Okay, so I'll quickly resolder this one resistor and then go on to the capacitors. There's really a ton of them. So all over here are uh, capacitors over here, 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 and one big electrolytic. And after that, there's still the potentiometer, uh, poten potentiometer? potentiometer, I would say, and the socket for the headphones. Okay, let's go. We have um, all of the resistors and the standard capacitors, the film capacitor and the electrolytic capacitor. And now we get to these beauties here. These are tantalum capacitors. You can also replace them by electrolytic capacitors if you like, but I think those here are have a longer lifetime, I think. They can't pop as the electrolytics can. And I think they're neat, but you also have to take care of the polarity, so they go here in the round things with the plus signs. And yeah, here's the little tiny, teeny tiny plus marked on the right side of the capacitor, so make sure you do this correctly. Okay, once more, all the tantalum capacitors have been assembled. We are left with one diode and one, and in theory two, how many? No, one. One transistor and one diode, plus the potentiometer and the headphone jack. I'll do this all in one go and then we are finished with all the components. Afterwards we can put in the I see. All right, this is uh, the soldered finished thing, and it turned out pretty okay for the first try. Um, let's hope I didn't mess anything up. I must say this was really straightforward and especially the pre-packaged things from Mauser are yeah very useful because you just rip open the package, take out the components that you need and the bit of materials on the project ha actually has the parts numbers there so there's really no way that you can mess this up. I hope, but we will see when we try it out. So what I'll do now is put in all the ICs and again we have the, I think it's on the first page, most of the ICs are, are they on the first page? No, they're actually here. So they also have the part number so that you can't uh, misread it. Here's the part number and then you see, okay, this goes into U2 and U3 down here. You just have to take care that you See the notch here, which points to the same notch on the chip as well. Okay, let's finish this assembly.
finally it's done. Okay, I inserted all the little ICs here. You always have to make sure that you don't bend any pins. Also, the ICs are usually with a pin so that they are a bit at an angle. So you have to bend them inwards very slightly to make them fit into the sockets. You can do this by just putting them on a flat hard surface and then bending very slightly um, with the whole force of the package. But make sure that you don't break off any pins or anything. And also make sure that you are not statically charged with electricity. So touch something of metal before taking those things out of their protective cases because they are sensitive to electric discharge. Well, we can't do any more here. I may want to zoom in maybe once so that you can see. Can I actually zoom in? Yes, I can. Okay, let's take a closer look what we have here. So basically this is the heart of the whole card. It's the OPL2 chip. Here's the Yamaha duck, which makes basically the digital data that the OPL2 produces into audible waveforms. There's a um, 386 LM386 amplifier chip, which drives the headphone output via this potentiometer. This is a bus interface chip, which interfaces to the ISA. I think there's some flip-flops and shift registers or something like that down here, but I actually never used those, so I have no clue what they're actually doing. Yeah, and this is all there is to this very simple card. I also have a bracket, but I have to put in some holes, mount, mounting holes for these uh, two things, and then I can properly install it in a PC. But maybe we can even take it out for test drive. So either we get some burnt hardware here, or we might hear something very soon. So let's see if I can make it. Okay, so this worked out pretty well. Actually the card has a bunch of noise, but yeah, maybe this gets better when we put this all in a metal case with shielding or something, but to be honest, the first sound cards weren't that great because they are so simple. So here it is, still missing the bracket, sitting in a 16-bit ISA slot, which doesn't matter actually, and working just fine. So I'm really impressed that the first try turned out this well. So, yeah, I'm really 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 happy that this works and I can recommend doing this project because it's a lot of fun and let's see where it takes us. So we can now try to finish up the retro PC, put it later in a case, first make the hard drive work also, which will be the next step, and I will also demo a bit more of the games with, of course, nice adlib sound and yeah, what you can actually play on this machine, because that's what it's for. It should be a retro gaming machine, um, something that I used as a kid. Okay, so that's it for today. Sorry for the shaky video here. You can take a look at this very nice machine now, and I think you can have a nice evening, 
share, like and subscribe as usual if you want and otherwise see you next time. Thank you.